Dr. Commoner, in your speech, you contrasted uh, the achievements of science and technology with the present quality of today's life. Would you elaborate on that for us? Yes, I think uh, we all know from our daily experience, from reading the newspapers, and from thinking about what's been going on in this world, that it's really not a very pretty thing. Uh, I think that it's very difficult to read the newspaper and realize that we're using our enormous technology to build airplanes and napalm and explosives uh, to kill peasants in the jungle. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to read about that without realizing that there's an enormous contrast between the competence with which we build airplanes and the incompetence with which we use them, namely to kill people. You used in your speech the term environmental pollution. Would you define this for us? Yes, the environment is the uh, natural system, uh, nature in which we live. And what's happening is that we're beginning to destroy its ability to support us by polluting it. Uh, the air, which uh, used to be uh, fairly easy to breathe, is now full of smog, dust particles, and so on. Uh, water pollution has become increasingly bad in this country. Uh, lake Erie, for example, is uh, now almost a dead lake. Uh, it has lost a good deal of its oxygen in the central part of the lake, and without oxygen, the biological cycles that keep the water pure can't go on. It's been predicted that 20 years from now, the same thing may be true in all the surface waters of this country. Um, we are deteriorating the environment on which we depend for our lives, and I've taken the position that if we don't do anything about it, we may destroy the suitability of this planet as a place for people to live. Well, then do you feel that science is getting out of hand? Yes, I think science is very definitely getting out of hand. I think that uh, we have uh, generated really very serious threats to our future by the way in which we use science and the way in which we threaten to use science. The fact that uh, our understanding of nuclear physics has led us to accumulate uh, enormous amounts of nuclear explosives and to design ways of using them in a nuclear war, that I consider to be a threat to the survival of the human race. I think it's pretty clear to many scientists that uh, no one would really survive a nuclear war. And what that means is that nuclear weaponry is incapable of fulfilling the purpose of uh, a, a defense system, which is to preserve our way of life. And so I think there are uh, already a number of instances in which we have threatened ourselves and our future with science and even more serious ones uh, that may develop potentially. Well then, uh, once the problems uh, are realized by science and scientists inform the public uh, uh, of these problems, what kind of solutions uh, can we find to avoid such calamities that seem to follow very closely with new technological advancements? I don't know what solutions will come, but what I do know is this, that uh, the solutions have to be made by uh, everyone in our country, everyone on the surface of the earth. And I think the trouble is not that we don't know what solutions we need, but we don't even know what the problems are. For example, how many people in the United States know that the enormous military budget that we have is for a form of defense that simply won't work? I think if people knew that, I have simply the faith that when people understand that nuclear war won't work, they'll find a way to do away with it and find some other way of defending ourselves. I think that when people understand um, that the way in which we're fertilizing our soil is a threat to the purity of water supplies, that we'll find new ways of doing it. Uh, it seems to me that in all these cases, there's, uh, there are benefits on one side and hazards on the other, and we have to learn where to make the balance. The big problem is that we don't see what the benefits and the hazards are and uh, we are very largely ignorant of the need for making the balance. Um, and so I think the scientist's job is to let people know what the problem is and uh, then let the people solve it. And I've got faith that they will.